Ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Board of Awesome, because we still don't have a name yet. That legislation is still pending. Uh, we have a handful of things that are gonna be going on tonight, some minutes to re review. We have some updates from both our board as well as the town administrator. Grant applications, some of which uh, we've talked about in the past. A couple of resignations. Someone doesn't wanna be a parking clerk anymore. Um, and then under uh, new business, we've got a one day liquor license request. We've got a couple of appointments to make, and then we've got to figure out a path forward for hiring a uh, new town administrator or interim town administrator. Uh, before we get started though, I'll turn it over to Tom about the passing of um, one of our staff. Um, I'd just like to uh, offer the board's condolences to the family of Chris Sibley. Chris um, was uh, born and raised in the town of Whiteley. He's been working for the town for for a little over a year. He was in our high, highway department, but uh, Chris was a... Um, when, when we interviewed Chris, we had a uh, conversation. The highway superintendent and myself had a conversation, and Chris, Chris came from good people. His, he's a great family. Um, his mom and dad are, are very involved with their town of, of Whiteley. Chris was a lieutenant in the fire dis, uh, their fire department, their volunteer fire department. Um, it, his passing, he was a, he was a young, young man with a young family. Um, it, and it hit our highway department um, and our staff hard as well. So if you could have a moment when you think of the, uh, the, the Sibley family um, and their loss, um, if you could just include them in your thoughts, um, I, it would be appreciated. And we hope that the family is able to uh, move on from this. So. Chris and Lynn, Randy, we were thinking all of you. We thank for you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. You're welcome, Mr. Chair. Okay, first up, we've got some minutes. Last week, we had a full house. We had one agenda item. This week, we've got a full agenda and the brain trust of Sunderland <laughs> in the back row. Right there. <laughs> that said, I want to thank the folks who came out from the DOT, um, as well as uh, the residents, uh, and concerned citizens who raised uh, thoughtful questions without raising their voices. I thought Sunderland on display was good. People showed their best to try and understand, to express concerns, and uh, be rest assured the DOT will take those comments. Uh, and is the 10-day period over yet? No, not yet. Okay. Uh, October 7th. I'll, I'll circle back to that one piece. Uh, take those comments and uh, plug them into whatever wild formula they've got they get to work with. Also, there is at our website uh, a link to an online uh, questionnaire. If you want to file questions in writing to the DOT about the North Main Street project until the 10th or the 7th? 7th. 7th. Until the 7th, uh, that written comment period is open and they can be submitted straight through. So if you're still concerned about it and have other, other uh, things that came up after the meeting and you're really hot to trot, send it in. Okay, minutes from 9-9. Nine, nine. Seems like it's so long ago. It does, <laughs> doesn't it? It does. Uh, we were all over the place. Uh, we have a motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion's made and seconded to approve the minutes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Call that three to zero, please. Oh, sorry, second page. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Uh, under select board updates. We'll go through our, I wanna take under the select board updates, just two updates, and, and then later in the meeting, uh, we talk about the resignation of the administrator about the hiring process. So with that said, uh, I don't have any updates. We have an upcoming capital planning committee meeting. It coincides with the planning board. So Next Tuesday. There you go, next Tuesday, <laughs> downstairs. Peter, next Tuesday. Yeah. Any Tom or Brian? Uh, David? Um. There, there, there's a couple of things, Mr. Chair, 
if I could. Um, the the markers on South Main Street are known as Sheros. Sheros, yep. And Sheros um, specifically are in they they they're to indicate to motorists and to bicyclists that the road is is technically shared. Um, the the road is being striped hopefully this weekend or this week. The <clears throat> highway superintendent um, has said he's been trying to schedule for a while, but the uh, we contract out the uh, line striping, and unfortunately we're at the uh, yeah. at, of the, at the mercy right. of a contractor to to paint the sign. So that supposedly is going to be done this week. Some question the spacing of the sharrows, and the sharrows are spaced according to Mass DOT requirements, and they, the state says because we're helping pay for improvements that that's they paid it all one hundred percent. They and they that they paid they uh, they get to say what goes on the roads. So, um, and, and, and it's okay, I think, from personal experience, my brother-in-law was up from North Carolina and he had no idea what they meant. And I did relay that to Sherry. Um, and I, I'm not sure who knows what they mean, but maybe after we get the further additional, the fog line, which are the white lines, and the yellow center line, maybe it'll become more evident. Um, but I, I, it's confusing. It's, it's confusing to us, but some, there's greater minds out there than ours that sit up here, and that's what they require, so that's what we get. So um, bear with us. Um, I did learn today that we do have a green arrow now um, on the intersection of 116 and 47. Southbound. When you head southbound off from 47, if you're going to take a right towards Deerfield, because we know everybody wants to get to Deerfield quickly, um, there's now green arrows there. Right. So um, that's a new change, and the state has been playing with the um, signals, the timing, like all of that kind of stuff to try to make it work better but I also learned that last Friday was a very difficult day in on that intersection but I was talking to some people in Hadley and they said that they've never seen traffic backed up like it was last week in on Route 9 in Hadley so I don't know what that means so if you have a concern I would ask you to don't hesitate write us an email and we will pass your concerns on to the state or to whoever and and we'll, we'll, we'll get this worked through. So thank you for your patience. Davey? Uh, we had our first <coughs> committee of this meeting of the season, I guess I'll say. Um, and that was, uh, that was good and we're working on our goals and everything for the upcoming year. So getting rolling on that stuff. Okay. I have one other update I could add. Uh, we have our annual bond for 120 North Main downstairs. Mm -hmm. uh, it is for $122,500 for a one-year bond, and that is at 1.95%. Mm -hmm. So we we'll warn the public that that's downstairs. Again, instead of a long-term borrowing, these have, been, these have been annual authorizations, and this authorization, we're down to 122.5% from our original <coughs> purchase price of that property and 1.95%. Nice. Uh, so that's it. Let the public know that. Okay, no other updates. Sherry, what's going on? Um, <laughs> pretty quiet, right? It's yeah. quiet, right? <laughs> uh, we received funding under the Green Communities Program, as you know, um, for LED lighting improvements yep. at the elementary school, the library, public safety complex, and the town office building. Yep. 
Um, we also received funding for attic insulation at the public safety complex in this building as well. And there's a variable frequency drive um, improvement in window inserts at the public safety complex and steam control valve replacements here. Um, so that total grant amount was $152,770. Uh, we have an Eversource approved vendor in place, JK Energy, and they will be coming out tomorrow to visit this building in the public safety complex and uh, get a date nice. uh, in line for starting those projects. They'll be coordinating uh, with the school as well, but tomorrow's visit is the public safety complex. What uh, elements are at the school again? LED lighting? Uh, elementary school is LED lighting and uh, no there there was we did put in for them uh, I think it was a variable frequency drive mm -hmm. and that wasn't funded so um, I believe it's just the LED lighting at the school okay thirty three thousand eight hundred and fifteen dollars for that project make sure to pass those measures on have you got a copy of those Peter yeah we've seen that and, and uh, it, you know they're getting they're doing the coordination to get the work done yeah. and uh, obviously that's the thing because at least I assume because the electricity is now a separate line item in the town budget right. that any savings that from this whole program which should be substantial will fall right to the town and help the budget turn. Correct. The yeah. mm -hmm. Won't affect the school budget, it just right. affects our you know, we'll have better lighting. Right. Better lighting yeah, again the quality energy, of lighting costs, with energy costs for the town in total. Right. And prior to this grant round we have had energy reduction in each of the many of the years of the last decade. So we're, we're okay. consuming less, generating more, you know, capitalizing in this case here, 152,000 plus uh, through the state. We've done some with utilities, we've done some of our own. Anyway, sorry. Great, thank you. Next. Uh, and then the other project, we finished our first round of complete streets projects and uh, we're ready to apply for the next <coughs> grant, round, which is due tomorrow. And so two weeks ago, we met with traffic planners from um, FERCOG, mm -hmm. uh, George and I did, and we went out and looked at um, some of the streets that are on the prioritization plan. And we also looked at some areas where um, there are some traffic calming that's needed. Um, and so for the next complete streets round, we'd like to apply for funding for um, South Silver Lane complete streets, 201,143, that's for five foot side, five foot wide sidewalks, about 2,200 linear feet on the east side. The other project is Falls Road Bicycle Accommodations, $28,016. Um, this project is for signage and for fog lines and for one of the um, radar flashing mm -hmm. signs. And then the other, um, last but not least, South Main Street sidewalk. This would be the other side. West side, yep. yep. Mm -hmm. that we didn't because we did one side yeah. yeah the west side it was not done so that's for a hundred and four thousand seven hundred and thirteen dollars mm -hmm. so the total grant application would be for uh, approximately three hundred and thirty five thousand dollars so we would hear sometime in january or february if that's funded and we could do construction in the spring we mm -hmm. have time to look at design and engineering, any right-of-ways or easements. It looks like, for the most part, everything's in the town right-of-way, mm -hmm. um, South Silver, on the South Silver Lane project. Mm -hmm. Oh, as wide as that it is, is, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that include those, in those two signs we talked about three weeks ago? The traffic signs, those, um, it looks like we're going to, George is gonna process a project request. <coughs> Um, the town will be paying the, for that. Under the Chapter 90 yeah, yeah, program, yeah. and we would pay a portion of it. Uh, the cost for two signs, there's a sale going on. <laughs> it's a sale on it. Right? <laughs> hey. hey. Exactly. We get free right. shipping? $5,400 for, for two signs, mm -hmm. um, oh, or we okay. can just do the one. Um, we yeah, have about $1,200 that we could kick in towards it if you don't want to use all of the Chapter 90 funding. Okay. Yeah, we should have that taken care of in the next yeah. bean boy cycle, mm -hmm. right? To figure out how to, how to actually go about that. But yeah, so um, my question along the South Silver piece was the 
start and finish? Is it Old Amherst Road and is it continuing all the uh, way down? Okay, so uh, from the intersection of South Silver Lane and Old Amherst Road to the southern end of the residential area, approximately 2,200 linear feet. The project will also install five foot bike lanes and 12 inch buffers on both sides of the street and bike lane signs from Old Amherst to North Plain Road. The existing roadway is 32 feet wide and the project will reduce the travel lane width to 10 feet. A new ADA wheelchair yeah, ramp and crosswalk will be constructed across South Silver Lane at Old Amherst to provide access to the PBTA bus stop. So we're slowly getting our way towards your mark. Because there's a yeah, slowly getting our way. I'm having, just looking at the. Went to the FCAR meeting. I spoke with Laurie Scott. Our area of town, they still classify it as rural. Mm -hmm. She called North Plain a rural road. And I can tell you, I said, I talked to someone tonight. Everybody's amazed at how much traffic's been sure. running down North Plain and, and Plum Tree. Yep. Over the home. past couple of years, it seems like over the past two to four years, it's quadrupled. We're going to find out soon. We got the yeah, road yeah, counters out. Things out on the road. Yep. Yeah, volume. I can't so wait we'll to know the volume. So those traffic studies are, but we're, it's not rural anymore. I know that's yeah. the perception. Sure. But it's, it's changed. Yeah, by volume. So we'll, we'll get that data collected and, and be rest assured. Where it validates that comment. <laughs> well, that's the nice thing about those flashing signs too, is most of them can also track and yeah, do counts. essentially traffic counting. Yeah. yeah, so which is good. We'll find out. Well, I like I like the fact that if that that project, you know, headed down that way, right? We're head we're headed right. that way. I, I hear you. Unfortunately, we do have that. I should say unfortunately, but we do have that separation with the farmland. It yep. kind of provides a geographic separation from that aspect sure. of South Silver Lane. I understand why that area needs sidewalks for yep. sure. Yep. But you uh, get that separation <coughs> until it comes down to us. Right. Well, our next next area of focus will end up being somewhere closer to Plum Tree. Yeah, and Twenty years on this planet, I'm <laughs> <laughs> love it. Okay, anything else, Sherry? Yep, that's it. Okay. So I'd like to thank Sherry for the work on the complete streets piece, um, because if you look at the general texture of the landscape in and around uh, Sunderland, last say four years, you know, there's been just improvements. It's change. But it's awesome improvements. Yep. Okay, George wants a cruiser. <laughs> a retired one. <laughs> <laughs> so George, the highway superintendent, currently has a 2004 retired cruiser and wants to know if the board is amenable to <coughs> picking up the surplus cruiser that the police department is making surplus. It's going to give him a whopping four years, I think. It's either a 2008 or 2009 cruiser, so you know, the 2004 is, is a, I use the word shabby at this point. Okay, what makes sense? Character worn. Character worn, yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, move to allow. Is there a, for, a um, motion? To, uh, for discussion. Yeah. I, I have no issue with it. The only thing is, I could have sworn there was something in the green communities thing or something that. Yeah, look, either look discourage it or says you can't. You don't, they don't want you recycling down vehicles. So, okay. I, I think you know. I'd say I'd vote in favor of it, but we should just double check. Do our homework just to make, on Yeah, that. just to make okay. sure. Okay. Great point. So there's a motion for discussion. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Okay. Wendy Clerk does not. Wendy. Pool, the town clerk does not want to be the parking clerk anymore. Is it is it because we didn't have t-shirts and hats for it? Is that what? <laughs> the little radar thing. You know, <laughs> yes. Get all the parking, all the meter spots. So now, Are there meters in town? No, 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 no. Yeah. Now these would be assigned by the police department, and then if contest collected and contested, they would go through the parking clerk. Uh, in this case here, the town clerk has had that role, and that said. Is it the treasure collector who's interested? Yeah, she's offered to do that. She's, okay. She talked to Eric about it, and the police chief and feels that she could handle the extra responsibility. Okay. So is there a motion to accept uh, treasure, I'm sorry, the town clerk's resignation as the parking clerk? Motion. Second. Motion's made and seconded to accept the resignation. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Two to one. <laughs> With regrets. 
<laughs> okay, and now appointing. So now, would it make sense to simply no have? No one said the job was going to be fun. That's right. <laughs> Uh, is, is there is there a, a, a sense that we're going to make the appointment immediately uh, for the treasurer collector? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Move, move to appoint the treasurer. Is there a motion to appoint the treasurer collector as parking clerk for the remainder of this appointment cycle? Motion. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. And, and again, the, the, just just the thing. I think it's I think it's important to say that most of the people that are in these positions are are volunteers, or there's a need because of state law changes, and that's Correct. what happened with when he was appointed the Correct. the the parking clerk. Yep, that's fair. And and I and I would just say is that when when if you have a concern. Um, that having respectful conversations all around is important. Sure. And and just because someone's behind a counter doesn't mean that they're Fair. free game yeah, yeah. to take. Whether it's a dog license or a parking ticket or right. whatever. Right, and, 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 and no one, right. and, and there's not, there, there is not anyone in this town hall or the police station or the fire station or collector treasurer or wherever that wants anybody to have, or the building inspector or electrical inspector that wants someone to have a bad day. Sure. Um, but I will say from 19 years and six months that it's getting that a lot of people no longer take self-responsibility. Um, and I think it's, and if you don't register your dog, uh, it's not me that didn't register your dog. It's not me that made the law. It's a state law. You have to, and and you have to have your dog registered. You have to have your dog registered. It's not me that parked that parked in a place that. So to yell at the parking clerk or because you didn't pay your taxes on time, it's not there. So I, and again, I I just <clears throat> I think you can say a lot better than yelling and, and screaming and. There's, there, there is, there is a need to get back a little decor back, mm -hmm. a little decorum back in how we talk and communicate with one another. Fair points. Fair points. Okay, so while we're on the registration train, I'm oh, sorry, resignation train. Oh, could I get the vote no again? <laughs> well, she didn't see that clause at the beginning. Yeah, like, <laughs> we're working. Actually, we'll talk about that clause there. Um, sort of like the Hotel California. So we have we have here from September 12th, we weren't able to act on it last week, obviously. Uh, town Administrator uh, is resigning and going on to a Town Administrator position in Princeton, and they are a lucky town. Uh, I understand their, their board is uh, thorough and thoughtful, and uh, they couldn't be asking for having better help. It's not Greenfield. Sorry. Chicken is that? So uh, Sherry's letter. Your sure board of Boston said, said that. That's right. Sherry's Sherry's letter reads: I'm submitting resignation as town administrator effective 1019. As you're aware, I've accepted the town administrator position in Princeton. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the board, department heads, volunteers, residents for their support during my time in Sunderland. I'm proud and honored to have been a part of many good things that are happening in Sunderland. Sunderland is a good example of what can happen in a small town when people work together for the betterment of the community. I wish you continued success. Sincerely, Cherry Patch. So we announced this back then, announced that we would post for um, the position, both permanent and interim. And this is our, our reading reading to, to the town. Uh, Sherry's contracted position, there's exit clauses associated with those contracted positions. But you know, it would be nice to take a two to one vote anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I would say one to two votes. One to two votes. Sorry. Well, it doesn't say it. She said, I mean, we can't stop the resignation. I understand. But see, we can make a, up a statement. We can make a statement. We can make yeah. a statement. There you go. So uh, when we did announce it, again, there was uh, more than platitudes for uh, Sherry's work here in town. Uh, not only her professionalism, but a certain demeanor that is kind of like calm 
and that is a breath of fresh air in what can be a very busy office. Not that we haven't had hectic phone calls, but you know, Princeton is uh, Stay quite calm and carry on. There you go. That's right. <laughs> Princeton's quite fortunate for uh, picking up uh, a consummate professional in in, uh, in Sherry, and uh, we have a lot to build off of. So, you want to talk about hiring process? Sure. You want to comment about Sherry? We did this once already, but you know. Oh, about Sherry? Um, um, but the work done uh, at the town. <laughs> all you, like, kind of what we were saying earlier, all I have to do is walk around town and you can see, and especially coming up and down the stuff we've got going on with School Street, the park, and right. everything. And I appreciate the very effective and chill approach mm -hmm. to getting stuff done. Because it, it is, it, you know, all you have to do is turn on the news to see that people can't talk to each other. All they can do is yell at each other now. You know, we need to get stuff done. And, the, you know, it's going to be a, a tough loss, but good luck. You Thank know, you. we should have a graph that shows the town administrator with the most grant success. Because yeah. it seems to me that Cherry, as soon as she signs something, manages to get it. Like, every single time. I think this needs to, like, I, it time, makes me want to think too to kind of problems, but yeah. set the bar up a little bit that you know pe right. that almost needs to be in a, a, a more emphasized aspect mm -hmm. of the job. Right. Uh, but great point, Tom. We twenty years ago, when the town decided that, uh, and through a lot of discussions about if the town needed a town administrator or not. Um, there. I I think the. There, I think our town, um, we had commissioned a study, uh, a, a, we got a grant to look at the, how the town was, how the town was run. And the guy that came in to do the study is still, still around. And there was a, <clears throat> there was a recommendation that we should have a town manager. And if people went back to that original study that was done, and then looked at where Sunland has gone from that that original um, report into where we are now. I think it would have been it, the results if you read carefully. Um, adding a town administrator to the town of Sunland pretty much um, mirrored what <clears throat> what a town administrator would do for us. It's been mirrored. It, it's you know that report. If you went back and bring the report back, which we don't do enough of, and and look at the thing that said a town administrator could bring to the town, I think um, you'd find out that it it has. Um, and for the board of selectmen, the the board of selectmen, it's important to set the tone of expectations. Mm -hmm. And Sherry kind of picked that up right away, and. I think what we what we asked Sherry in her interviews and in our co private conversations <laughs> were, were, with her is we're we're not going to stand in your way. This is what we want to accomplish, and I would say Sherry had met what our original conversations mm -hmm. had been and exceeded it by a factor of ten. Sure. And and is that good? Yeah, and no, because when you when you are successful, people come looking for you sure. in our business. Um, so she's done a, a wonderful job. She has continued our luck of having good town administrator. Start with Dana Kenna, yep. Yep. Uh, Margaret, yep. and Sherry has picked right up for Margaret, and they both have different strengths. Mm -hmm. We recognize that. Um, but the greatest thing is that Sherry didn't come in to be another Margaret. Sherry came in to be Sherry. Right. And that's hard, in my opinion. Um, she did a great job. She did a great job at that. And, and, that's, and, that's, and, that's, and that, to me, is a hard thing, because cause if she had come in to try to be Margaret, she probably would have failed. <clears throat> And she put her own stamp on the town administrator's position. And I thank you for that. Thank you. And and th there was no late nights where the lights burning, having to tell her what to do. 
um, she knew what she had to do, and that's important. And and you don't find gems like that very often. But every once in a while, there's a hope diamond, mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes there's something better. We were and we were we've been very lucky. So thank you, Sherry. So have I. Thank you. So do we take the one to two vote now? But I can <laughs> vote no. <laughs> <laughs> so that that said, uh, Sherry's last day is going to be the nineteenth. Uh, we'll work on some notice to, you know, small parade, dirigible, flyby, something. There you Do go. something fun. We're going to have a um, community workshop on that day <coughs> at the Sunderland Elementary School. That Saturday, October nineteenth. Mm -hmm. um, I believe the time is going to be nine to twelve noon, but we'll have it up on the website and flyers around. And that's for emergency preparedness planning. Oh, yeah. So we need community input for that. And we're especially looking for farmers input. So if you could attend that meeting, that will help us with our planning process, which will help us to leverage funding in the future um, for grants to implement recommendations that come out of that planning document. And, um, and I would love to see you and say goodbye on October 19th. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, process for hiring. So, so Mr. Chair, we we have we have ad we had ads in local and trade magazines for interim and regular town. Yep. My opinion, and, and for what it's worth, is that I would like to I would like to concentrate on hiring a town administrator versus an interim. Mm -hmm. My my reasoning are that interim. Sherry knew she was in for the long haul, so so she she started doing things with a more of a long term. That's fair. Yeah. Perspective. View. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I I think we wouldn't be we wouldn't it, have an interim wouldn't be a bad thing, but I think we could probably go through the hiring process in a couple months mm -hmm. well I mean and again Sherry, Sherry's a true professional because a, um, a true professional in this is not afraid to give three four five six weeks notice because mm -hmm. they understand what what's taken place and, and how the administration of a town works um, and that to me is a sign of a professional instead of just a two weeks notice or whatever minimum notice um, and Sherry also knows that um, I think it's it's important that we bring in somebody that right from day one is looking for the long term versus a short term view. Right. So so I would I would say that I would I would recommend that we look for long term, go for a town administrator, uh, not so much the, the interim, and and also. Um, I just think in the long term we'd be better off doing that. Okay. Dave, what do you think? I would agree. I'd rather see our energy expended on, you know, just moving right to the next. Okay. Screening committee question. Time has passed. We've used the screening committee. I, I think that's a good idea. And, 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 and Mr. Mr. Chair, I, I would like to recommend, I mean, we are fortunate to have an active personnel committee right now. Fair. Personnel committees just review job descriptions. Yep, and applications to see if they match up minimums, maximums, etc. They just went through a study. Why wouldn't why and and it's a it's already a sitting board. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't we could could we and why wouldn't we talk to them about mm -hmm. doing a screening? So the screening or a survey of the applications and then the recommendation. Just recommendation. Sure. So not interviewing, but the, the paper side of it. Yeah. That's what I would. I, I, I think common, that it's common in private industry. <laughs> yeah, but but that's I mean, we're fortunate. We have an active personnel committee and we have community residents. I mean the residents are on it. On it we right. have employees on it. Yep. We have people that are that that are invested in the uh, personal aspect. Yeah. Fair. So we've got job descriptions, we've got applications, <coughs> bundle them up here, personnel committee, you know, what what 
what um, out of the <coughs> out of the resumes and experience, you know, is everybody in this stack qualified? Yeah. Okay. It, it, I mean, what do you think? I think that would help expedite the process. Invariably, if you having, I first got involved screening committee for the first town administrator. That was my first appointed thing here, and it was Dana. And it was fine. Everything all worked. It has all worked out well, uh, with the exception of it seemed like it was so long ago, and here I still am. So that's another problem. <laughs> um, that said, that said, uh, don't volunteer because it'll get you. Um, the board invariably conducts the final sets of interviews, primary or secondary interviews, and follow up, and then contract negotiation. So it's not like a screening committee does more than uh, winnow a large pile, right? Or say, whoa, wait a minute! You're not even, you know, you can't take your third, your, your third, your third grade education and your tricycle and apply for the job. As ambitious as it sounds, you can't yeah. do it. Um, and in, in that sense, I think the personnel committee could rifle through the applications, match up the job description, which has already been approved, and then bring that to the board and say, listen, of the ten, the everybody qualifies, that. or <coughs> two people don't. <coughs> yeah, I can get behind that. And then we end up interviewing. You're going to interview right. anyway. Right. Well, that'd be my first suggestion. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if people on the personnel committee want to do that. I haven't asked. I mean, I haven't asked them. Yeah, we can reach out to them. Have right. Cherry, reach out to them. Yeah. But that that would be my my suggestion. Okay. I mean, it, and and it would it would it would bring them into the bring them into discussion. Mm -hmm. I know somebody on that committee. What's that? <laughs> I said I know somebody yeah, on that committee. Exactly. But yeah, I, it, it's a good. I think it's good to have another body. Yeah. yeah. Do that first vetting and stuff. You know? and, and and again, I I think like we did last time. I think if we have to, we can divide up our divide up some of the things. Um, we have, you know, we, we're fortunate that we have an experienced staff in house that can that can keep us the day to day. You know. Yep correspondence and stuff like that and 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 hopefully we can get it done by the middle of November end of January I mean in the November beginning of December so and we okay. start off the new year in the budget site the budget cycle with uh, someone in place okay so you want to reach out to the personnel committee and sure. uh, ask nicely and see mm -hmm. if <laughs> we'll take it from there well, did we schedule we scheduled our next meeting didn't we I think I feel like we did I'll check back. Yeah. Oh. So, with that said, let's let's talk about a timetable, right? We're going to, into ten nineteen. Our add to the MMA and the Beacon so should be. So it's been on the MMA website. Mm -hmm. It went through the Stam listserv. Yep. Uh, it's in the recorder, mm -hmm. and it will come out in the Beacon tomorrow, October first. So. And that's a one month publication. Yeah. So, do you want to give it a couple more weeks? Yeah, see if the reservate, so we see if they keep coming in, but we should we should have, I would think, some kind of feedback from the personnel committee for. I'd, I'd like to have a meeting with the personnel committee. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. When's your meeting scheduled? Uh, Sherry's going to check to see yeah. when it is. Cause, well, I can't um, remember the date off the top of my head, but. Right. Yeah. You want to bring him into one of our meetings or have no, joint we'll, meeting? No, we'll we'll we can talk to him. Talk to them. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's do that. We'll, we'll make, see if we can get on the personnel committee's agenda for their next meeting. Yeah. I think we can squeeze you in. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep appointing you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I appreciate that. We do have some applications yeah. for both interim as well as, as, well as uh, homework full time. And that's important to bear in mind. Uh, Sunderland is a wonderful place, and we hope to attract good people. All right, next up, one-day liquor license, Mike's Maze. They want to do a beer tasting maze. They want to do it on do, 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 do. fourth. I feel ten on October fourth from six p.m. to nine p.m. Uh, malt beverages only for profit. Did we vote on on Sherry's resignation? <laughs> yeah, move 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 to move to accept the resignation of. Is there a motion to accept the resignation? of the current town administrator to go to yeah. our uh, sister town of Princeton. Motion under duress. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> okay, all those in favor of accepting the resignation? Aye. 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 Extreme. With regrets. Aye. 
but and congratulations. Not, not a great happiness that mark. Well, that, that yeah, it's it's a mixed thing. You know, well, well, anybody that has anything to know about town government realizes that Sunderland, we are at a certain level, and we have our we place are very in the order. And, and for expect someone to come in and, and give us four or five good years is all that, and especially because this is a tough business. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is a tough business. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very tough business. And yep. Great point. And there's average expectancy. You're kind of like right at. You're kind of like right at it. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> I hate to say it, but you know. Well, you know, it kind of goes along the lines of what your comments earlier. I am. We've had this discussion in our family because a number of us have worked in various um, customer service jobs throughout our lives and stuff. I think almost everybody should. Do a little customer service time so that you see what it's like to be on the other end of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, honestly, that's essentially what government service is. And Good point. Just because somebody works for the, the evil government, as it's put sometimes, you know, I mean, we're all part of it. And you know, it's they, everybody deserves respect. Great. You want respect, you got to give it. Okay, so we got a three to zero vote on that. Uh, we have. Police chief's comments. Uh, I assume Mike is going to send in his insurance. He's done this before. That's part of our checklist. Yeah, okay. And there's uh, no issues with uh, Chief Dimitropolis. Uh, Board of Health or Fire Department. Right. They've all well. waited. So. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions regarding the one day? No. Nope. Uh, is there a motion? Motion. Aye. There's a second, and all those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero, please. Okay. Someone wants to be on the Community Pathways Committee. Motion to appoint uh, Ian Lippinat. Second. Excellent. Did we do the payroll clerk resignation? Yeah, we did that with the, resi okay. with the right. resignation and with then the, the appointment was, yeah. the, was the following vote, but thanks for catching that. No, payroll. Payroll, yeah. It's not parking, the payroll. On the bottom, I wrote it in, I just got it today. Oh, I haven't, sorry, haven't, I, sorry, haven't, haven't got there quite yet. No, I blew right by it. So uh, we did Mike's, we have a request of appointment for Ian Lippincott to be on the Pathways Committee, motion. Made. made and seconded. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero. Okay. Back to resignation lane. We got one more appointment. Energy committee. David Goodwin. I was going to jump backwards, but okay. Oh, okay. Let's 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 finish the appointments. <laughs> then we'll take a resignation. Yeah. There you go. Uh, motion on that one. <coughs> Energy Second. committee. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. And thank you again for. Uh, volunteering to be yes. on these committees, appointed to these committees. All right, we have a resignation. Cynthia Caparoso from the payroll clerk's role. And this is a part-time piece. And what's the plan for a payroll clerk? Um, we will advertise. We're looking at some support from perhaps the FARCOG mm -hmm. as well. I sent uh, an email to their financial director so okay okay so uh, we have a, a resignation um is there a motion um motion. Well, second motion is made and seconded to accept cynthia caparoso's stepping down as our part-time payroll clerk all those in favor aye, aye. three to zero please How, is that what is that like 20 hours no, or is it's only a couple hours. It's only a couple hours. Okay. Week, okay. See, hours a that week. would be hard good, to. That'd be a good yeah. shared resource because then you'd be able. You know, I'd be curious to know if any other towns would be interested in that because it is hard to get somebody for like a such a small time right. slot. Yeah. You know, maybe we. I don't know. Maybe it's something worth looking at. It's going to be some kind of continuity. A service has got to either be trained in the systems yeah. and be able to kind of plug in yeah. and understand the kind of nuances associated with payroll. And part of payroll clerking is also quality control. It is. You know, someone right. who runs a payroll, I get it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, what? Wait a minute. Um, yeah. 
so if we can reach out and talk to the cog and yeah. see if some to David's point if there's anybody else out there that's interested in shared service that would be helpful um, Bay State Accounting does some of that as well okay. so yeah. I've got two phone calls out. Great. Great. <laughs> okay it's not going to affect us in the short we just have to pick up the slack right yeah. great okay anything else tonight before we head off to executive session No. Public comment. I was almost here. Okay, nothing else. Peter. Public comment. Hey, public comment. Hey. Um, come a little close here. Yeah, yeah, come on up. Uh, first, I just wanted to add my thanks to Sherry because uh, I've had a number of dealings with her and it's just always been uh, terrific. Yeah. It's really, really sharp and really a good show, too, to show. Thank you, Sherry. You're welcome. Very Thank you. A um, couple things uh, dealing with the school um, that I want to bring up. One was a couple weeks ago you had a discussion with a couple of, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, with a couple of gentlemen about maybe tying the sh their uh, wastewater operation into the town. Oh, so, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not coming to talk about that. Right. But when, the, when they left the meeting, I followed them out and introduced myself, said I was on the local school committee and had a few questions. Wanted to find out basically what they might know about, you know, how that uh, progress is shaping up on that because um, it's going to have an impact on the school, obviously, for May. Right. And the second thing became clear. So we just talked about, uh, you know, the progress of it and what's planned and when the, when the leasing is going to start yeah. and so on. And it's 150 units and a quarter of them have to be for affordable Yep. Uh, qualified housing, and one of them said that as far as he knew, that meant it couldn't be students because they didn't qualify for that, but maybe that's yeah. not right, but that was his impression. Anyway, I'm thinking, boy, we got close to 40 units that are going to be for affordable housing, and again, still no way of knowing what that means in terms of how many kids are going to be there and what age they're going to be. Right. Um, but in terms of planning, a lot of what we do with the planning. They're not going to start, you know, leasing the thing out. They're hoping to have occupancy end of next summer. They're not going to be leasing out until springtime. At which point we got a budget already. Yeah, right. You kind of heard. Okay, we got a budget that's been through the whole budget process, and you know, soon when past the town meeting, so on. And we don't have a clue what the impact's going to be from that development. Huh. Interesting point. And we don't have a clue in terms of the numbers of kids. I mean, the kinds of things that you'll get is the number of kids and the impact could be either lesser or greater depending upon what grades they are in and how they fit with your current grade structure because there may be space in some grades, but really you don't want to add to some other grades. And, you know, I've looked at the grade numbers where we are right now and that would be case. I mean, if we got 20 kids, but they were just the right grades, you know, we could probably handle it without, you know, too much... Uh, additional uh, cost if they gain, you know, a bunch in one grade, you know, right. that could be a real problem. I'm reminded as you speak, Peter, of the visual at the Museum of Science in Boston. There is the, there is the, 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 essentially it's a glass with a series of pins, and the balls all drop through, oh, yeah. and it represents the bell curve, and invariably it ends up being the bell curve, just out of randomness. They all kind of fall in. So I'm seeing what you're saying, and visually I'm going, okay, well, wait a minute, How, what does that? Well, what is the bell curve? You know, yeah, right. Exactly. Right. You got 20 kids, it's exactly three in each grade. Exactly right. I mean, it, is that the bell curve? Right. Or, huh. I don't know. Anyway, it's three in one grade could. Come. I was just thinking of the major unknowns that would have financial implication. One is obviously the number of kids. Yeah. Yeah. Two would be uh, to the extent to which you get. Significant special ed costs <coughs> with uh, some number of those kids. Uh, three would be, uh, do you have uh, what sort of uh, demands that pays on your, your current busing contract? Mm, that's right, transportation. Okay, transportation. And do you need to, you mm. know, somehow figure out a way to have, you know, how to have a bus? I mean, I don't know. Okay. And, again, none of this do you know about when you're putting a budget together. Right. So I'm thinking, how do you deal with this? Okay, and part of my way of thinking you, the way you deal with it is you start a conversation, okay, with you guys and the finance committee will get, you know, be part of this too, mm -hmm. and the school, okay, in terms of 
That's the way you're dealing with this. Okay? And to me, the sort of way that I would say, maybe the, the sort of normal way of dealing with it, based on how town government sort of, the calendar on which town government works is, well, you wait till, you know, the fall, you see how many kids come, you see how much it's going to cost you, if you need some more money, you have a special town meeting, so on and so forth. Um, that scares me, you know, and it scares me because I remember back when we had a year back in the mid 90s and I ended up going uh, to pay a, I actually went and visited the fourth grade classroom that had 34 kids in it and then <coughs> you know, we got to get some more money and went through the process of hearings at a special town meeting and we didn't have a second teacher in there until late November or something like sure. that. Um, I'd like to think that if we do, you know, if we got a problem, we need another school bus, um, we can't wait till late November. We got to have that school bus. You know, you don't know, you know, I mean, kids will start registering. I don't know what it's going to I just want to have a discussion as time goes on right. and hopefully a sort of general agreement on how we're going to handle, um, you know, and maybe the financial uh, implications will be very minor, okay, but maybe they'll be substantial. And, you know, my sense is that if we take you know, the, 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 the responsible people in town and have an honest, open, transparent discussion about what the financial implications are, we can figure out a way to deal with this that sets things up in advance, mm -hmm. okay? That sets up maybe, okay, here's how we <coughs> deal with it, where when it comes to some point post-town meeting and all this, there is some accessible amount of money that on agreement of all the parties could be then used. Hmm. I'm just thinking, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well what's what's possible? And I'm not looking for anything tonight. I just wanna start just start the, the dialogue. Yeah. I wrote I wrote the one sentence down forecasting for. Right? Because yeah. you're kind of like how anyway. Well, A A, I, I would say don't forget the value the value of that complex was twenty seven twenty seven million dollars. Mm -hmm. right. So to, if ju and just numbers I just did calculator that's and it's what sixteen dollars. I'm gonna say sixteen dollars a thousand. That's four hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars more revenue coming into the town. That being said, the, the way the school budget is is done, I I think that you can you can you may not have. I I would hate to put money into the budget that we don't know is going to be spent. Mm -hmm. I'd, ra I'd rather. That's why I'm bringing this up. I'd, I'd, I'd rather. I, I'd yeah. rather say, okay, town meeting, everybody look. This we know this may happen. We and to tell you the truth, today they may tell you there's going to be 30 kids, but they don't know. Who knows? Well, that's they, it. Nobody really um, knows it. And, and I can tell. I can tell you that you know now in conversations that we have. These are the conversations that we are looking that started with the planning board ten plus years ago that the planning board asked to have back then, okay? And and read read their traffic read their traffic impact statement. We, we just pulled that up the other day because I'm I'm concerned about traffic on Plum Tree and that that area pedestrians on that area. You go down there now on a on a Sunday morning, and there's just with the neighborhood there's people. Right. That were not there. Mark is right. That weren't there ten years ago. 50, you know, ten years ago. Now walking. Jeez. The impact back when they were talking about 150 apartments, and we know that that's patently false, and it, it, and it's not true because they're renting bedrooms. Mm -hmm. So that hunt, they have more like 430 bedrooms. Right. Okay. So you could say there's 430 apartments there, not 150. Mm -hmm. You could say, okay. And and I feel like I'm in Washington now with 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 a check, but this is their own numbers that they are presenting. Okay, their thing out of the out of the traffic traffic study said there would be 65 cars. Right. right. I don't know if there's enough parking down there to to for the 435 yes. bedrooms or whatever. Yep. I, I, it's got to be like four something. It's yep. four something, right? Yep. <laughs> So I don't even know, and, and they never told the planning board that. They never told the zoning board that. Indeed. They never had that discussion. They never had that discussion with the state about what impact would be on the thing. I agree with you, Peter. I would say 
that is that and when we go to next our town meeting in the springtime we can so we need to say look this is our budget for the projected school start of the school year with what we know now but we have this uh, this complex coming online we don't know how many how many school age children there could be there. There could be frontier because frontiers affected frontiers also. Right frontiers could be affected too. And, and our numbers would change because it's all based on number of students from the community that use a school. So yeah. our numbers could change at right. frontier. Except for, except for that particular item, okay, is on a year lag. Right. We got a little. We got a little. That free. particular item, the share of the central office cost. Yep. Correct. Okay, and the share of whatever, but it's it, it's. And it's also spread over the four towns, whereas the elementary school is booming yeah. right on us. But, right. but what I would say is there. that the only thing that we can do is I think I think the school has enough leeway on how they spend their money. Because mm -hmm. once you, well, we understand, so if you appropriate $8 million, or whatever the number is, the school can spend the $8 million however they, they, they deem pur purposeful, right? Mm -hmm. And then... They would have to, so you would start spending that number. Then, then in October, when you have a final number, then you need to come back at town meeting and say, okay, we're going to be getting more revenue, revenue projected at, we have X, X amount of thing, we're going to have to increase, and we're going to have to go to and ask for a, a prop two and a half override. Potentially. To, to fund, and it's, it's not the school's fault, it's what, because of that influx of people that's coming in. I think that's the only thing that we can do. Okay, I would still, I still want to have as much of a discussion as we can have and as much understanding and as much openness about what's going on in the school budget. So Absolutely. there's a sense of, you know, we're trying to build credibility. We're trying to build, whether it's respect like David was talking about or, or you know, trust or something. Um, and I am just, you know, I'm struggling with how we deal with so many unknowns. Sure. Okay. Well, so how that's again, I just wanted to start talking about it. We'll be talking I, a bunch more. And the good point. The the, <coughs> the point is, if if that's if budgets come forward like they have in the past, when you when you look at when you look at um, the pure purely by numbers, mm -hmm. okay, to fund the budget to put additional monies in, in anticipation of, of more students, you would have to ask for an override. How could we sell an override that if, if to, to taxpayers if we don't know? Oh, yeah, I bet. Right? Yeah, I agree, but that's, that's getting down to like the, one of the, the final pieces. Of, if, I, if I could, it almost is almost like the closer, you know, we have the conversation this far out, we have the conversation as not only its progress comes along, but at some point, it almost, it sounds a bit cliche, but it's almost like a tabletop exercise. Okay, school committee members, board of selectmen, finance committee, if it's if it lands in the calendar here, how do we go about it, right? Or what can we anticipate? What's the maximum? Well, what's, what's a minimum? Minimum is nothing changes. Everything is, is college students, great. Not likely, likely to, there's opportunity there for some graduate students with families, you know, <coughs> whatever, whatever. Somehow educating, uh, being able to provide education support for uh, a new population in town is got to be a bit of a brainstorming session. And the, I think you're raising, Peter, is a series of, if I'm hearing correctly, is a series of concerns about the how right now. So how, how, we, how we deal with this problem right. going through the whole right. year right. in yeah. a way that that uh, um, you know, I mean, satisfies the law, sure. but also you know, satisfies the realities of the different ways the school and the town are budgeted and spend yep. their money and so on. But tries to get to you know as good a conclusion as we can right. get. To Tom's point, if it's a fun, if it's a functional reset of population, then the functional reset should include a, a revenue stream to go with it. And the wild card is, as we know, is. State reimbursement, right, you know, all that other stuff. I mean, there's the revenue stream you refer to, which is they're going to be paying property taxes too. Correct. Yep. No. Well, and, and I don't not, know what you know what your board has in the way of thinking about you know 
use for that or need for, 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 for those revenues for other town departments or town functions that have been underfunded or you know, whatever the case may be, what additional demands that's going to place on the various town departments, sure. you know, which will not be trivial, I would imagine, right. and, um, and also which will not be known in you know, exactitude before right. the place is occupied yeah. and up and running. Well, that's and the thing. We're, we, we won't know that you until... Know, I mean, the police calls you're going to be getting right. you know, it all the time. And, mm -hmm. and, and if, if nothing else, at least we're talking about it. And we're planning, and we're not blindsided when suddenly, oh, you, you, know, can, you go to the ribbon cutting. Thirty-two and students show up Monday yeah. morning. You get a call right. from the superintendent. Right. Like, so hey. I just wanted to. I just wanted to start get it out here. I, I think it's important, and, and no. get people thinking. Because if nothing else, maybe we can have. You know, it's a little more time to come up with some creative ideas. Right, and I talked to it at our last. I mean, I raised it at our last school committee meeting too. That this is something that we're going to have to be continually. You know, addressing this year in terms of how we you're, you're you're basically twelve to eighteen months out from beginning to feel impact. Well, we're no, <coughs> we're like uh, well, twelve months. Yeah, mm -hmm. eleven months. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. 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 Makes sense. Anything else, Peter or Tom? Tom was about to say something. Oh. Uh, well, I, I, for for me, you know, it, in un unfortunately, when you when you serve on a on a board for a long period of time, we're involved with the town. You you kind of remember the the discussions, the discussion points that that were had, and, and I go back to to Dana and and Russ Crenshaw on the original presentation where they just asked to, to take take something off from a piece of napkin, put it on paper so we can evaluate it correctly, and and I if 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 the Supreme Judicial Court of the State of Massachusetts would ever have a, have 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 the time to take and and actually come and talk to us about the the decision. So we we never had a we never had an opportunity to discuss the merits of the program of, of the the housing. Not not one person in this town is against it is against affordable housing for for our friends, our neighbors, and our family. Mm -hmm. No one's against that. We just want to do it smartly. But we, we've never we've never had the opportunity to have those that discussion, and and that's the most that's the most frustrating thing because I, I go back to Charlie Hepburn. Char, Charlie Hepburn one time when they were putting in a project, set was at a planning board a zoning board meeting and said, you know that place is going to the first major rainstorm that place is going to flood, and every single person. In a, that, that had lived in that community for a little, that part of town, looked at and he said, yeah, they all agreed. And then we had a hydrologist that had a, many letters after his name, said, oh, no, no, what's going to do this? <clears throat> well, guess what happened after the first, that the first significant rain, of, rain event? All right, Charlie didn't have a PhD, but Charlie had a PhD in common sense, and, and exactly what he said was going to happen, happened. And, 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 I'm sitting here knowing two people that died on 116 because they, they got hit by cars, and I see that thing happening again. And, 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 you try to, and you try to say, before it happens, let's stop it, let's do it right, and, and no, one, no, no one will pump the brakes and, and allow that to happen. Oh no, it's going to happen. And the next thing you know, we get <coughs> on that project down there. They're, they're, they're putting in a 12-inch water pipe from the well fields. Where's that 12-inch water line going? Okay, I don't know, but I do know one thing, that they somehow they're able, when you're supposed to look at the economic right, value quotient of that piece of property, and that, that, that whole thing supposedly had a quotient, a number, now they just take it, sub, take, well, it's, it's, it's an inconsequential. Right. No, somebody's going to be selling money. Somebody's going to be selling water, making money. It should matter, but but the state doesn't care. So I guess I'm just saying it's frustrating, Peter. Your your points are well taken, and and I'm 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 glad that we have people like you that are sitting on a school committee thinking about that now, um, instead of waiting for it happen. So hopefully, so I appreciate what you're saying. I'm just frustrated. I understand. I, understand. I hope you do because. No, I. I, I I have managed to stay out of involvement with that project in many times. I mm. figured it was good for my mental health to be not involved with it. And thinking what you guys have all gone through over this long period of time, and 
yeah, I can see how you'd be really pissed. Yeah. Well, it's just and not. It's not that. fair. Yeah. And 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 for us, our whole life, we, we're 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 taught to abide by you know what your mom and dad teach you or, or your aunt or uncle or wh whoever bring you up, your dub moms, dub two moms or two dad, whatever. But you, you tell you just, you just want, you want a fair, you, you want the playing ground to be fair so that you can have an honest discussion and move forward correctly. And, and so that your side, and even if you and I disagree on something, it's still important that you, you're able, you have an opportunity so your opinions are shared. And, and in this process, it wasn't. We had we had lawyers that that don't live in Sunderland, that don't know anything about it. Don't and and they, they did all the argument. Yeah. They can cite chapter and verse, but it's not project specific. Yeah, and and, and that and, and and our planning board, they and the zoning board, they never got an opportunity to do what they do really well. And and actually, and it comes out. And, and typically, their decisions are make, are are, right. are pretty damn good. Make for a better project. The discussion, right. sure, should make for you a know, <clears throat> and and just like our, our, our senior housing, uh, you know, there there's reason I and 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 the abutters and, and the and the zoning board, planning board, they, they use all all the conservation. They they did your thing. Mm -hmm. There's there's open discussion, and there's been changes made, and and while it may not be what either side wants totally, but I think we have a better project, and I'm glad they had the conversation. Mm -hmm. But I, we never had the conversation, and now we're going to put how many cars on the road, and people are going to try to pull out, and and there's there's going to be accidents, and our police calls are going to go up because of 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 that, and and in the long run, who, it's going to affect all of our quality of life. Fair. But so sorry, the, Mr. Chair. No, over the next couple of months, we'll we'll continue this and include as we go to the budget process begin the awareness campaign right i mean i i don't expect you know i expect as we start in the budget process that this becomes right. a regular and important thing but i just wanted to bro <coughs> yeah. to sort of put in your mind that this is coming because it sort of struck me that even after i walked out and i started talking about and thinking about how many you know just talking about the affordable units are filled with people who got kids sure who knows but we're going to have to deal with it. Yeah. And, and, and the school, it's like, you know, the traffic stuff, somehow, you, may, you know, end of the day, you got to deal with it. Okay. Number, can the kids come into the school? We got to deal with it. Right. That's the law. You take whoever, you know, they live in town, they can come to school there. Yep. So, okay. anyway. Uh, one other thing, and that is that uh, uh, I had a, uh, they've got an education bill and it's, uh, you know, slowly been agreed to by the powers that be and maybe passing through the legislature mm -hmm. quick in the next couple of weeks or mm -hmm. who knows. Um, Senator Joe Comerford uh, had a uh, uh, call-in thing where uh, officials, school officials and others could, could call in and listen and she spent the better part of an hour explaining it and then taking some questions. Um, and I sent a an email to her that evening afterwards saying, well, the one thing that seemed to be missing in it, which is the one question that most people in this situation would ask, which is, what's in it for us? Mm -hmm. Meaning, how would what is being talked about affect Sunderland? Um, and I ended up, uh, and she got back to me and she said, you know, and she basically told her, her chief of staff, Jared, I can't remember his last name, mm -hmm. uh, about it and he got a hold of me today and um, it seemed, you know, he's being, uh, I mean, partly there's no way of knowing at this point in the process, okay? But what it looked like to me is that you've got a situation where it's going to be phased in over a seven year period. Mm -hmm. They talk about it uh, addressing uh, major cost areas that include the cost of uh, health insurance and retirees, uh, the cost of English as a second language programs, the cost of special education programs, and the general uh, need for more funds for the really poor communities. Okay, and when Jared, you know, went through all this and said, of course, you know, you don't know, you don't know, I should turn out and so on. But it basically sounded to me like we're not going to get much of anything. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Because he said, like, he said, <coughs> you know, if we're just, you know, a rough figure if our Chapter 70 money is now in the range of uh, high 700,000s, he said seven years from now, he said under, and he, you know, get all these assumptions. Right. Yeah. Okay. Which all you can be sure of is they're not all going to happen. Sure. Okay. okay. But all these assumptions, after seven years, we could get another 30,000 of Chapter 70 money. Okay. Yeah. I said, well, hold it. I said, so that's for, you know, be in a somewhat poor community. He said, no, that's for all of those lumped together. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all those things, you know, including the insurance, the health insurance one, the, the, the special aid cost, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. Sure. So, so I said, you know. That begs the question then, where are the changes? If it, I mean, well, is, he it, is it the minimally places that are getting a ton of money are places like Holyoke and Brockton mm -hmm. and yeah. wherever else that, you know, are really disaster areas as far as, you know, education, but it's not gonna help didn't sound like it was gonna help Sunderland and uh uh certainly you know, I don't know. Right. Um, and then um we had a little discussion and he said well and they're trying to up the percentage of funding for the um three year program that offsets charter school mm -hmm. costs and try to get that fully funded, but I says that's not the charter school problem. The charter school problem is the Fifteen to 20,000 you get billed if one of your kids goes to charter school. And he mm -hmm. says, yeah, I know that, he says, but the problem is, he says, and Senator Joe is very concerned about that, she knows all about that, but if that gets put in this bill, the bill is that much less likely to pass. Sure. Incremental bite. So, anyway. So, so just tell them it's easy to solve the problem. The state pays 100% of special education cost the year that it's incurred. We would be fine. That, that's all they have to. They don't. They don't have to have the formulas. They don't have to have the all this thing. The social right. social re. They just have to pay to support the laws that they put into effect. Mm -hmm. Special education reform and 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 the state would pick up one hundred percent of special education. And guess what? We we would be okay. I believe. Well, anyway, I I'm not again. I'm not arguing with you. I'm just. Yeah. You know, I was sort of I hung up feeling like, well, you know, maybe I had some hopes because, let me put it this way, you all, you're all aware if we get a little bit of what they call rural aid mm -hmm. to schools, okay. Yeah. okay, in the first year, which was FY19, the year it just ended, right. we got four, almost 5,000 for rural aid. Mm -hmm. We also had to report back to the school how we were using it to, you know, benefit from regionalization and all this sort of stuff, whatever. So this year we're getting like 8,000. Well, you know, it's better than nothing. Well, or they um, could help but it's, eight but it's according to the reason we get the 8,000 is not only are we sparsely populated because we have, I believe, uh, we didn't get in the first tier because we weren't under 10 kids. There was something, so many kids. Our number it had to be under 10 in terms of kids per square mile or okay. something like that. I think it was kids per square mile. Mm -hmm. And we were at 13. Yep. So that got us <coughs> two, which got care. a little less money. Huh. So, you know, as long as they continue that, we should be. And we're, the cutoff for the average income, we were like about 8% under the mm -hmm. limit. So that's why we qualified for some, but Waitley Conway, Deerfield didn't Did qualify not. for anything. Right, right. But we're not getting very much. Um, you know, again, a little bit is better than nothing, but, um, so. That's good stuff. Okay. All right. Thanks, so, Peter. Again, on this whole thing, the big, you know, the big education bill. Yeah. I don't get your hopes up. More requirements. I know. You'll see, you'll see towns like Benson and Wellesley and. They'll do quite fine. They'll do fine. Yeah. But, and, and because that, they, they have no idea what school choice is a concern right. because they that that's they're not they don't see school choice right. hmm. we had a, we had a discussion at our last school committee meeting about school we've had, we've had regular discussions about school choice but we're talking about the numbers for this year mm -hmm. how they are and the number uh, right now for inbound is about 50 which is uh, a good number mm -hmm. a little bit more than last year and so I asked principal Ben and I said you know it, you keep a, you, you you keep an eye on this, and he said, "Oh yeah, good." You know, like starting last spring when the problems came, was all of a sudden we got to do a better job of right. of knowing who the kids are, 
no, being responsive to you know their needs to being responsive whatever just so that we you know we don't get surprised mm -hmm. okay and so you know at least the number has started off the year well and at least the administration is paying attention to uh, the issue so hopefully we don't get you know blindsided again plus we're getting rebudgeted to have a, a, a good buffer so Go on. You know, so you got the is it the November adjustment the state comes back with the adjustment for choice revenues um, we do everything the next thing is is the re, the annual report mm -hmm. is based, is due in October 1st even though got you it. can get extension to the end of October where they take all the information from that and then they publish in December yep. what the number you use for budgeting is got it okay as far as I'm concerned the only number that really matters is what your actuals are sure okay it's like I care much more about the actuals month by month, how much you are generating in the terms of eventual revenue, mm -hmm. okay, then by, you know, some number that still goes back to your October 1 number. Right, right. You know, and I would rather look in March when you're trying to finalize things and say, great, what are our school choice numbers, not just on October 1, right. okay, which the state says is your budget number, but what were they in November, December, January, February, March? Because at that point, again, as long as, like Ben said, you know, you're you're paying attention to this and you're making sure you've got good numbers, mm -hmm. you got a much better idea then right. than what the state budget, you know, guidance is. And it gives you an opportunity to push back with facts as opposed to having, yeah. having to react to a report that comes out. Yeah. Here you go. <coughs> Great point. Thanks, Peter. Okay. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you, Thanks. Guys. So we're going to close out tonight uh, going into executive session under Mass General Law. Chapter 30, Section 21A, the third note, that's to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and, this is all in bold and underlined, the chair declares yeah. so. So we're going to go downstairs. We have one agenda item. That agenda item is about, a, is about the potential conclusion of an existing lawsuit. That said, um, I do think it's necessary that we do this in executive session and we will take no other action on no other subject. We'll over, we will return to open session only to adjourn. Can, before we do that, mm -hmm. can I just ask mm -hmm. that Sherry review before her last day all executive, executive session, session so that we can, yeah. we can vote, vote on, on the minutes? On the minutes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we, will, we will schedule one more before her departure. Okay. Yep. And I don't think we have a lot. I think we're no. pretty well taken. No. No. We may be able to release a whole no. release. I haven't had that many for a while. And again, not a lot, but right. we haven't done a lot. We did no. some labor negotiations that would probably be captured in minutes that are now right. contracted. And it's complete. Right. And, okay. Good point, Tom. Thank you. All right. Uh, so the chair declares this will be a roll call vote. Aye. 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 And again, we will be returning to open session only to adjourn.